Sweden is located practically on the doorstep of the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc countries, so it's a no big surprise that this would be a hotbed for spies. Uh, two journalists who have written about espionage here are joining me now. Charlie Nordblom, he wrote a book several years ago uh, called Industrial Espionage. He has a new book about spying that's going to come out later this year. And also Jan Guillou, I think I have that right, is a journalist who hosts a popular public affairs program on television. And in addition, in the 1970s, he was tried and convicted of espionage for writing about Sweden's secret military intelligence organization in a series of magazine articles. And we welcome both of you to Good Morning America. Thank you. Charlie, maybe you could start us out. How many, as far as we know, how many KGB agents are, are active here in Sweden? Uh, the number of Soviet intelligence officers is about 80 in Sweden. Uh, and in no the Nordic countries as a whole, there's about 400. Do we know, uh, we being Sweden and, and the West as well, who they are and what they're doing? Yes, I think most of them are identified. And in my book, which will be published this fall, uh, War in Peacetime, uh, I will identify 30 of them. Uh, Jan, how free are they? How freely can they operate here in Sweden? Well, it's probably better here than in any other country in the Western world because they don't risk anything from the Secret Service. You mean from the Swedish? From the Swedish Secret Service. So you are, are, are rather critical then of well, of the course, job no, uh, you know, the Swedish Secret Service is probably the most incompetent institution in Sweden, and this is not only something that would hurt our national pride. I suppose it does. It's also bad for our democracy, because, and it's bad for the security of the state. Charlie, go ahead. I, I don't think it's incompetent. I think it's uh, really hard to say if they're competent or incompetent, because it's the politicians who decide if uh, Soviet uh, intelligence officer, officers should be expelled or not. And uh, there's only been 10 expulsions during the last 10 years. That's and what I want to know, because the number has gone down. So one yes. wonders why it has gone down. I don't believe there's a reduction in, in spying. No, in Norway, there you have expelled 35 uh, intelligence officers in the same time. And uh, I don't think the uh, Secret Service in Norway is more efficient than Sweden. It's a policy of appeasement towards the Soviet Union. Wanting to stay neutral, not wanting to Not aggravate. wanting to endanger the good relations between the Soviet Union and Sweden. So kind of laying back. I don't agree. From 1951 and onwards, there's been only 10 major spies convicted sentenced in this country. That is, if you include me and my journalist colleague, leaves you with eight. Out of these eight, two were innocent. Leaves you with six. Out of this six, one escaped. Well, this is not. This is a gloomy uh, statistics, really. All right. Let's step aside from how uh, the efforts of Sweden in trying to get these people out. Let's talk about the consequences. How concerned should we be, uh, you know, in the West, about what is going on here? Well, Sweden is a part of the Western system, militarily, economically, and scientifically. So it's bad for all of us then that the Russians could pick up all the goodies here much easier than they could do in the United States or certainly in, in West Germany or France or England. So it's, it's a common concern, I think. I mean, anyone with common sense knows that well, obviously the West has their spies over here too, keeping track of what's going on. But how dangerous do you think it is as far as what kind of uh, information they can gather here? They mostly use open information, open sources, talk to journalists, politicians, uh, diplomats, and go in an above-board way, while the Soviets uh, use underhand schemes, use cover positions, and use illegal methods. That's the wide difference between. I've read where the, the Swedes say that they are aware enough of what's going on that they could intervene at any point if they felt that, that Soviet uh, intelligence aid, aid officers were gathering information. I think that that's would be rubbish. Dangerous. You think it's rubbish? Yeah, yeah I'm because sure you would agree. Uh, I think that in the area of industrial espionage, they have a rather good grip. And uh, in the area of political espionage, there's no grip at all, because the politician doesn't allow them. And I think the most dangerous espionage, the military espionage, there the Swedish Secretary of the Service is not effective. They don't have any grip at all. They didn't catch up for one single industrial spy in this country, whatever they say about their own efficiency. Not one single KGB agent was ever caught in Sweden, not one. So it's just that they're div div diverting their interest into other things. They persecute Swedes instead. It's not really true, uh, because you can't persecute a, a KGB agent. They have diplomatic status. What Sweden can do is expel. 
and we have expelled about 10 during the last 10 years. In Norway, let me take that as an example. Many, many more. They have 35 expelled, and 19 out of these are industrial spies. If I'm sitting in the West and I take a look at this, then my view is that I would have to make sure I had people in here keeping track of what's going on if the Swedes are not going you do. to. <laughs> we do. Yes. I'm sure you're right. <laughs> well, thank you both very much for joining us today. Thank you. And we'll be back. We'll take a look at Sweden's foreign policy when we come back.